this year. The state has passed House Bill 397, which basically <coughs> changes the Open Meetings, Open Records Act. There are certain uh, changes to the open records that uh, I can either go through at a later time, I can send you a copy of, uh, Lou and I met today and went over those, how they could affect us as far as our, our it's more of a definitive explanation of how you do open records and how you do go into executive session and that type of thing. Uh, a lot of them are, are, are more specific, which is, I think is good. Uh, a, a meeting subject to the open records is defined as a quorum where official business policy public matter is presented, discussed, or voted on. They, they, they didn't, they deleted at a designated time and place. So what that means is, is that if you didn't even have a notice and all of us showed up at one place and discussed something, we would have to conform to those minutes of the records law. It goes into another thing is a committee. One of the, if, if you designate a committee and a quorum of that committee is present, you have to conform to those minutes. So you have to report it in that time. So I, I think I think that's uh, in other words, committee meetings have now come under the open open records law. Uh, we've always kept executive session minutes. They're required to be of course taped and that type of thing. Uh, there's certain instances that that change the the uh, executive sessions from the, st from the fact that now you can vote in the executive session. Uh, it, but if you vote on attorney client, uh, acquired leasing, selling of real estate, uh, purchase disposing of lease property, entering into option purchase, etc., you don't have to divulge that vote, but you have to, at the time that you decide to purchase that property, then you have to go like we have always done, gone into open session, mention the fact that we have a contract on a piece of property and we intend to, to, to buy it, et cetera, and then vote that in public. But it does allow a vote in executive session that's not divulged until later on, which I think is probably a good, good law. It increases the penalties for violation of the Open Meetings Act from a $500 fee to a $1,000 fee. It has penalties for criminal acts up to $2,500. So there are some things, and what I think I, I will do if it's all right with the chairman is to just send this synopsis to each one of you in email form, and then you can basically, uh, we, we do have a different designation about the custodian or the officer, and, and, and that was one of the things that Lou and, Lou and I talked about today is is we need to designate a custodian for, and it can be the chairman or it can be the chief executive officer, or it can be another person we designate. But they're the ones that are responsible. We have to put that on the website, who the responsible party is, so that people will know who they send the open record request to. Uh, and, and of course, we've always done that as far as that's concerned. Um, that's kind of a, in a nutshell. What, what the act is. It's a, it's a very lengthy uh, House bill. It's been approved and signed by the governor on April 7th, so it's effective now. So we're getting that kind of what we can be comfortable with. But I will send that to each one. So it's all so the synopsis. So we're saying any committee meeting from now on, we have to have Lou present to take minutes? If you have a form. Well, our committees are only two people, so if we have a committee meeting, that's... That's important. something the chairman needs to think about, because I mean, he could have three, and then if two were there, then it would be a quorum, which means that you have to, have to basically... Get to the committee. Committee. A quorum for the committee or a quorum on board? A quorum on the committee. Okay. Well, having received that information, I think this would be a good time to segue into a nominating committee. 